So now uh, let's talk about uh, inflorescence. Inflorescence is a modified uh, shoot system uh, that bearing flowers or modified shoots. The term inflorescence uh, appropriately refers uh, to the arrangements uh, to the arrangement of flowers on the plant. In many plants, that uh, the flowers are arranged, uh, the flowers are arranged into clusters. That flower cluster is called an inflorescence. Okay, flower cluster is inflorescence. So we are going to look at the structure of inflorescences very briefly. This is a very complex subject. Uh, same like the fruits. Unfortunately, I will not going to do justice to them, but I will just my best to give you a very brief introduction to this inflorescence with a flower cluster. So again, an inflorescence is just a branch, means that it's not just a single uh, stick. It's just it's got a lot of branching in it. Okay, a branch system that serves the formation of flowers. So what that means is that it is a branch system. Is a it is a branch system that bears flowers. So a, a flower cluster is a fine definition. There's two basic part positions where we could say these flower clusters develop. They can be terminal, so they can develop to this is a terminal. They can develop at the very tips of stems, like an apical uh, bud, or they can be axillary, uh, uh, which means they they have an axillary bud. So flower clusters can occur in either kind of uh, positions. Uh, Two principal types of inflorescence are differentiated in racemus, which is mean is uh, indeterminate or polyatic. So racemus here, yeah? sorry, I should change right. So the the axis is of unlimited growth, apical bud continuing to grow, thus bearing uh, oldest flower towards the base and youngest towards the top. So that's a racemus. So which means that. The flowers at the top, the, the flowers like the top is the the youngest one compared to the to 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 the at the base. But in the other hand, in cymos, uh, the 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 determinate or monot uh, monotelic the inflorescence, the cymos inflorescence, the main axis has limited growth. Uh, so which means that being terminated by the formation of a flower, and as uh, as each level of branching bears one flower, there's uh, generally a limited number of flowers and the oldest flower is either in the center or flower uh, of different age are um, mixed up. Uh, so we look at some of uh, the basic ones so it's not really necessary to memorize a lot of these terms uh, I myself cannot memorize it so so I, ca I cannot force you to memorize everything. I would like you to understand that very basic of the branching structure and I'll try to keep it that simple. The simple kind of branching structure we are talking here, this is a case where we have a terminal flower and after the terminal flower, okay, this is a terminal flower and a new flowers develop. So we have the, the, the new flower develop in the axis of the leaves. Okay, just a, just a, just a disclaimer, in inflorescences, in this uh, reproductive structure, we call those leaves bracts. Okay, so a bract is just a leaf or a leaf-like organ that occurs in an inflorescence. So here we have the terminal growth, the terminal stem coming up, the terminal stem coming up, and this then is the flower. So in this case, this type of branching you see is a dicasium. Dicasium, uh, di, di means two. So at each node, you are going to have two leaves, two bracts, and they're going to be an axis that comes up and ends in, uh, and, ends, uh, and ends up in a flower. Uh, on each of those, we would find two leaves and axis would come up and end in flower. Okay, and that just continues and that's what we are saying here. So if you have branching here, yeah, this we call it a compound dicasium. So as the simple dicasium, you have blood and then you have one of the mineral. But when you have one and then you have branching here, okay, at the, at the bract, then you have what we call as a compound dicasium. Just continue on and on and on. 
So that's what I want you to understand the, the basic branching pattern in terms of the branching. This is what you call it, say, dicasium. So up and in the uh, so that's what I want to you understand. Uh, and in the flower branches of the to this uh, of the to the side. Okay. So this is compound compound time. I think I'm I'm not going to uh, stress about this one. Okay. There's a variation. So uh, so. Uh, on that one of them is called monocasium. Uh, mono, of course, means one. Uh, and so what happens in monocasium is just that the same uh, of those branches, uh, but they don't develop. So and and we have this kind of uh, developing that is really at each node. Uh, we have here uh, our first axis flower. Okay, and now we have one leaf and then uh, the net, the, the node, and one leaf and that node, and then uh, two, and then so there's one axis, one flower, and one leaf, one axis, one flower, so on and so forth, and then just continues like that, a monocasium. Okay, it's a monocasium. Some basic branching patterns just happen on one side. Okay. Here's another type of one inflorescence. Uh, and these are called uh, indeterminate. Uh, so this means that there is no terminal flower. Uh, you notice in those last ones, each axis ends in a single flower. So in an indeterminate uh, inflorescence, there is no set number of flowers per axis because there is no terminal flower. Okay. So there is a various ways uh, that this can work, but the basic idea is you have an an axis and then you have so this is an axis and have you have bracts okay uh, and flowers in the axil uh, of each of those bracts so there's a flowers on each bract so they have bracts and it's also have flowers okay in the case there's a little stem that comes up uh, in the axil of each bract uh, the stem is called pedicel next one if you have one you have this one is called a pedicel. Pedicel means a little foot, a little branching underneath underneath it. Okay. Now uh, they're given different names, uh, but I'm really more concerned that you understand this is a different form of branching. Okay. Then the first example we look at. The same kind of uh, branching that we talked about last time, uh, Corim here. Okay, Corim here it is in more detail or not more detail but where there's more growth of that axis more growth of that axis so, so we have have all the pedicels okay so there's a literal lateral axis now it gets very long so and of course at the at the every axis they have every pedicel is a terminal flower over here okay so and then you can have a new bract and then uh, and then you have a, a very long pedicel and then a terminal flower okay and then this can produce a flat this also can produce a flat top okay a flat top or a round top okay uh, at, at the top of the inflorescence so we find this often uh, in the family uh, uh, apiaci apiaci this is called a corim 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 okay it's called a corim but again, uh, just understand is that basic kind of the branching now uh, and now we have cases where there are kind of compounds of those two types of inflorescence. So we saw in these cases uh, like the last one like the corim, corim uh, a long axis it ends in a flower and remember in those kind of cases we can have a lateral bract and another axis ending in a flower and that's all that's happening here and that can continue on compound branching you can look at this one okay and it gets more and more complex and panicle here it's just a more complex example of that kind of thing so don't worry again about the term right now understand the basic idea that we have an indeterminate inflorescence here so indeterminate inflorescence they get more uh, complex here again of course you'll see these different types of 
inflorescence sometimes in different types of families again in this is a uh, mean family the lamiaci the reticillester uh, types of uh, inflorescence you will see that there are clusters of flowers uh, clusters of flowers uh, like this at the node big clusters of flowers and we have the sunflower form family asteraci here uh, in the astraci in the sunflower there is a head of flowers yes head of flowers so this is a compound inflorescence that thing uh you just put that probably i can put that okay there's this are inflorescence inflorescence uh those are actually inflorescence so and uh, and so in this family we have an inflorescence inflorescence below that thing made up of inflorescences and little inflorescences look like a flower okay look like flowers and now there is a specialized types of inflorescence uh, so um, we'll just leave this basically to we get when we talk about the families probably uh, so i'll mention some of the family names here i will mention some of the family names here uh, this is one is fagesi the family of the oaks this is arikesi and this one is a big uh, moresi and especially in the uh, ficus family uh, ficus genus uh, morecesi again uh, other kinds of specialized inflorescence just mentioned here uh, this is a very unusual one the setium uh, and that's in the euphorbiaceae family okay and this may in the genus euphorbia remember i talked about the inflorescence of inflorescence in the astraci okay uh and these are uh, those inflorescence uh, look like uh flowers and then over here in the grass family of poesy we have again very complex kind of flowers and inflorescences so uh i hope uh everybody is okay with the inflorescence again i'm not going i'm not doing justice of this structure uh, very robust robust terminologies but i hope you guys can get some essence about the inflorescence feel free to refer to the textbook